Hello again, we are back with another episode of Dog Turds Into Diamonds. And before we get into today, a huge FA Cup third round tie against Frank Lampard's Premier League Sunderland, we start off looking at Viljami Senisalo. The Finnish goalkeeper has become our first ever four money transfer. Uh, yes, we have paid £28,000 to AFC Fylde of the Vanarama National League to get the services of Siniselo. He was out of, uh, out of season, out of contract at the end of the season. And we swooped in to get him for an absolute bargain. The ex-Aston Villa goalkeeper, you can see he started at Aston Villa in game. And yeah, he is an Aston Villa youth product. And uh, he is now going to be our first choice goalkeeper. I have got that goalkeeper that I was looking for since the start of the season. If we compare him to our own Tommy Reed, the five foot nine wonder who has been our first choice goalkeeper for the past few seasons, uh, they are about the same technically, about the same mentally, but physically, Sinisolo is demonstrably the better goalkeeper. At six foot five, he's got that huge aerial reach, that huge jumping reach. He's agile. He's got decent balance. He's just um, physically, he is just a far more suitable goalkeeper. Uh, if we look at the polygons, again, Tommy Reed, he's got a little bit of an advantage on his shot stopping, a little bit of an advantage on his communication. But outside of that, I think uh, Viljami is the better goalkeeper. So we've got a decent upgrade there. He's uh, he's played a couple of games. As you can see, he's played three games in League Two, kept a couple of clean sheets, a 7.43 rating. He's been absolutely superb. Uh, I was looking to actually play Tommy Reed for the FA Cup just, just out of loyalty, feel like he really deserves it. But you know what? I think Sinisolo is probably going to have to start. So we'll be playing this FA Cup game against Sunderland and we'll also be talking all about how League One has gone. You can see we are right now battling it out for a place in the playoffs with, I think, about what's that 15 games left to play so it's a very tight league but we're probably doing a little bit better than expected let's get into today's episode and talk all about it let's go Yes, welcome back to Dog Turds Into Diamonds here with AFC Rushton and Diamonds. Great to see you all again. Um, I have noticed that on the last few videos, starting with our big hour-long transfer special that we did in the build-up to this season ten, uh, we've 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 got a few more views than usual. We've we've got a handful of views rather than a couple of views. So uh, I'm quite pleased about that. If you are enjoying it. Drop a like on the video and uh, and also share it on your social media. Help us, help us to grow. As I said before, I've started doing just a few episodes per season, just to cut down on the workload. Because I mean, I, I'm in season ten and uh, the series hasn't really caught on. So just to kind of free up more time for the other stuff going on in my life, um, I uh, I'm just doing a handful of episodes per season. But if you are enjoying it if I see the audience grow and there is a, a desire there for more videos I will try and go back to daily videos so drop a like on it if you do want to help us with that help us with the algorithm and uh, we'll see how that goes now before we get into talking about the Sunderland game and why on earth Frank Lampard is there and what on earth he is he is doing with that Sunderland team um, let's have a look at how the season's been going. I think we'll, we'll start with a look at our schedule. As you can see, we are sixth place in League One. Now, we actually started the season really, really well. Now, in October, we had a huge winning run, look. And that winning run jumped us up to second place in the table. And I thought, are we going to do back-to-back promotions here? Are we just going to waltz this league and 
it wasn't to be, and that is unfortunately because although we had that great winning run where we got some really good results, you can see that generally we have struggled for goals. We lost here 3-0 away at MK Dons. We then lost 1-0 at home to Birmingham, who are obviously one of the big dogs in this league. 3-1 away at Plymouth. 2-0-0 draws with Burton and Wickham. And that little run there really dropped us down the league, combined with then, uh, again, another little run here where we were really struggling for goals. We just, we really need that le next level striker. I said it in pre-season that I felt like we were just missing that next level striker. And that's the way the season has panned out. We've had a lot of games where we've played really well, but we just have not been able to compete. Um, and I mean, I have really, really tried. If we go up, uh, let's have a look, just go up to the championship. And we have a look at Middlesbrough here. Now in their 23s, they have a player that we looked at uh, in... Uh, I think we looked at him in, in the transfer special, didn't we? Um, let's have a look. Have I clicked on the under 23s there? So I think uh, that's, by the way, Mark McFadden, who was our top scorer last season. He has gone back to Middlesbrough under 23s. We weren't playing him. Uh, he went back. I think that might have been a big mistake. Our top scorer last season, I think I should have stuck stuck with him, kept the faith with him, because the other options that we have bought in in the summer have not done it for us. So I think it, it might have been a case of better the devil you know. We should have maybe given Mark McFadden a chance to step up to League One. But because he wasn't playing, he was losing ability. He got recalled by Middlesbrough. Um, so yeah, he's gone back. We're, we're a striker light. Now, of course, in the transfer special, we were looking at Drew Doherty. This 20-year-old Scottish striker. He's got really good acceleration. He's really good off the ball. He's composed. He's got that amazing 16 finishing with 13 dribbling and 13 first touch. We had an offer for him accepted in the summer to loan him for absolutely nothing. And he refused the loan. Um, now, if I make an offer for him now. Look, they want nearly £4,000 for him. I can't pay £4,000 and I don't even know if he would accept it anyway, but I think Drew Doherty would have been that next level striker that could have had us push him for automatic promotion this season. Um, really, really sad that we weren't able to get hold of him. And there is another one. If I look at Forest Green, who are 10th in League One right now, if we look at their, their team, there is also a player here. Uh, let's have a look. Unless he has been loaned back. No, there you go. Ralph Rice. They have a low knee from Fulham. Ralph Rice, who, to be fair, hasn't hasn't really done it for him in terms of goals. He's got half decent rating. He's another pacey striker. Really good at dribbling. Can play on the wing. Uh, this is another player that I had an offer, a loan offer accepted for, and he then turned us down. So... Our, our lack of reputation, our poor facilities perhaps, have really counted against us this season in terms of being able to get that next level player in. And if you look at the season preview, I mean, we, okay, we are up to 23rd in the media prediction of where we might finish this season. We were rock bottom for a long, long time. Uh, we were rock bottom at the start of the season. We were expected to be surefire relegation fodder. And uh, obviously we are having an exceptional season in those terms. Uh, if we look at, uh, let's have a look at the uh, the wage structure. I mean, our, our, our win percentage there has a seventh look. Uh, if we have a look at, let's have a look, finances, salary per annum. I am certain we are going to be rock bottom here. We are. We are uh, over 300,000. We're 400,000 basically below Hartlepool in our annual spend. And they are 23rd in the league. So, I mean, we are really punching above our weight, but we just haven't been able to find any way of getting that next level striker in. 
And, I mean, right now, Stian Danielson is playing as our forward player. We started the season with Ben House as our main striker, playing as a target man. You can see he's not at the greatest of times. He's got seven goals in uh, 25 in the league. He's losing ability right now because he hasn't been playing, which is really disappointing. He did get up to 13 finishing at one point. Um, but yeah, he hasn't really done it. I, I do think he's got a lot of potential, but he hasn't done it for us. Um, and Stian Danielson, you're going to see, has been even worse. 3 in 27 in the league for Stian Danielson. Um, now, I played him at the start of the season, of course. We were trying to train him to be an inside forward on the left. He was absolutely abysmal at that, and I mean abysmal. We then tried to play him as an advanced forward. He was just as bad there. We are now playing him as a deep line forward. And he's actually started to give his best performances of the season. He's getting his average rating up. He scored a couple of goals recently. So right now he is the man with the shirt in the centre forward position. Um, but he is joining Egersund. I think, is that Sweden? He's joining, is that Sweden or is that Norway? It's Norway. All right, there you go. There's my geography for you. So he is joining Eggerson on a free transfer at the end of the season. When they offered him a contract, I offered him a new contract just to try and avoid losing him. But he selected the Norwegian team. So he is on his way out. But Stian Danielson right now is the best option that we've got up front. So you can see the lack of goals is really, really killing us. And Ellis Chapman is our top scorer, the left winger that, of course, we, we bought in uh, on a free transfer. He has got 10 goals and 6 assists this season in 28 in all competitions. He was running at about a goal every other game, which is why we had that great little run of form. But he hasn't been able to keep it up. He is still our top scorer. Um, yeah, he hasn't been able to keep that form going. And that is why we've kind of slipped down the league, because... No one else has really stepped up with the goals. Jack Nolan on the other wing, he's also done all right. Six goals and three assists in 21 in all competitions. These guys have been our, our, our main source of quality and attacking threat. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, goals has been the big thing. Now, what else has been going on? Ethan Varian is also leaving us at the end of the season on a free transfer. He's joining Cork City. He hasn't really been good enough for League One. You can see he's got 6.64 average rating this season. Not good enough. Uh, so he will leave us. We are going to be losing a lot of squad depth in attack at the end of the season. And we've got a lot of players right now that are, that are wanted. Joe Evans is wanted by South End. Eddie Little is where well, he's wanted by a few clubs on loan. Mackenzie is wanted by South End and, Tra uh, and uh, Wrexham. And. Agyapong is also leaving us. Our captain, I wasn't playing him at the start of the season. He felt he wasn't good enough for a place. He's worked his way back into the team again, but he's selected to leave us as well. He's going to Asante Kotoko in Ghana. And not only that, I accepted a £50,000 bid for him, the ex-Manchester United trainee. I accepted a £50,000 bid. I'm struggling to remember who that was from. It was from another League One club. But he chose to go to Ghana on a free transfer. So we're losing our captain. We're losing a number of forward players. We don't score enough goals. It's all in all pretty tough. Now, also, Igor Luiz has got major, major interest in him from Blackburn and Middlesbrough. They've been offering, making offers for him, but we haven't had anything approaching £400,000. He's got a £5 million release clause. It's somebody is going to have to get near the release clause for me to accept a bid, but he's wanted by Blackburn and Millsborough. Tommy Reid is wanted by Manchester City. Am I missing something here? Um, now, have I offered him a contract? I think I offered him a contract, but uh, he didn't accept it. All of our players seem to want very small minimum release fees. And um, yeah, but Tommy Reid, who's been progressing really well, the five foot nine wonder 
is now wanted by one of the biggest clubs in the country and he's not even going to be my first choice keeper. So it's a strange one. And also Eugenio Moreno, he is wanted by Blackburn as well. He has refused a new uh, a new contract. Again, his, uh, his agent wanted a ridiculously low fee, a minimum release fee, which I wouldn't accept. I think he is a player with so much potential, the 18 year old. I think he's easily worth over a million pounds. He wanted, I think, something like a, a £300,000 release fee. Um, I didn't accept it, but now we've got the pressure of Blackburn really chasing him. So, I mean, in terms of the squad for next season, things are really, really tough. We're going to have to see what happens there. Now, let's get on to talking about Sunderland. We take on a Premier League team in the third round of the FA Cup. It is the third time in our history we've reached the third round. We've got that dream tie against the Premier League side, but we are at home. It means we're guaranteed a really good home uh, attendance, make some really good money out of it, probably around about 300,000, 350 maybe. But obviously the dream would be take this to a replay, get to the Stadium of Light and get that massive income. I reckon a game at the stadium alike could be worth seven, eight hundred thousand pounds to us. So that would be fantastic. They are 20th in the Premier League. I feel certain that they are going to be relegated. They are 10 points off safety look. They are really, really struggling. They've only won two games in the league all season. So I think in terms of what their confidence must be like, this represents a huge opportunity for us, I think. Um, looking at the rest of the Premier League, Erling Haaland is the dominant force in world football still. He's top scorer in the Premier League. He's got the best average rating in the league. He is 30 years old and absolutely phenomenal. Incredible, incredible stats. The multiple Ballon d'Or winner now. And... Um, yeah, so Liverpool winning the Premier League at the moment, or top of the Premier League, but Chelsea second there with Erling Haaland and the game in hand. But yes, yeah, Sunderland really, really struggling. And Frank Lampard, incredibly, is the Sunderland manager. Um, he looks a decent manager, doesn't he? But gone are the days of Football Manager 2020, when he would spend two decades as the Chelsea manager and always, it seems, become England manager you can see he has absolutely been on the uh, on a little bit of a merry-go-round merry since leaving Chelsea, Swansea manager for a year, and he's then since spent the last seven years as Sunderland manager. And that is quite incredible, really. Seven years as Sunderland manager. What has he done in that time? So he has just got them promoted. Um, Oh, look at that. So, I mean, he got them relegated from the championship when he took over. He then got them up from League One as champions, and he's now got them up to the Premier League. So, I mean, he's actually done pretty well with them, hasn't he? He's been championship manager of the year. He's done all right, to be fair. He's got two promotions, got them back to the Premier League. But they obviously just don't have a Premier League squad. So, you might argue that based on real life ability, it's kind of a more realistic uh, career path for Frank Lampard now. But um, yeah, that's that that's the team that we are taking on. Let's get into this game and let's see if there's a chance of us at least taking this to a replay, getting that huge payday at the Stadium of Light. I mean, maybe, just maybe, we can even dream of a major upset. Again, just thinking about how they must be really, really struggling with their morale, losing every game. Um, do I stick with an attacking mentality is the question. The quality in this Sunderland team is obviously Premier League. I've actually had a look at their team. They are pretty good. Maybe I should have shown you some of their players. But um, what do I do with the goalkeeper? Do I leave Tommy Reid in? He is meant to be our cup goalkeeper. We're not in the Papa John's Trophy this season, which is strange for some reason. We qualified for our group, from our group last season. We are not in it this season. I don't know if that's because we've just gone up to League One and promoted teams maybe don't get thrown into the Papa Johns. I have no idea how that works. 
I'm going to go with Sanisolo just because he has been so good in the league. We've got Igor Luiz at right back. We've got Jacob Bryan and Callum Simpson. He's pretty tired after the last game. We've had a really horrific run of uh, transfer uh, transfer fixture congestion. Um, but I am going to go with him just because he's such an important player. I'm going to run him into the ground. We've got a week's rest after this game. Jordan Rossiter will be the defensive midfielder. Malicio has generally been playing there, but... Again, just the size of the game, even though his average rating has been really poor, just that, that quality and experience that he's got will put him in. Agyapong, again, for his, his experience, he is the captain. We're going to put him in, and he's going to be partnered by Moreno as the deep line playmaker. Jack Nolan is an, an advanced playmaker on the right, on support. The idea that Moreno is getting the ball in the build-up from the back and then looking to bring Nolan in from there where he can help hopefully feed Danielson and Chapman. Uh, and that completes the team. On the bench, Okadina, who's been having a great season, our, uh, our centre-back option there. McKenzie, also having a great season. Our right and left-back option can also play defensive midfielder. Malicio, Eddie Little... Joe Evans, Varian, and Ben House. We've got a little bit of a tired bench because I rested most of our players for our last game against Stevenage, which we won 1-0 thanks to a Danielson goal off of the bench. Um, and then, uh, yeah, out, out of the squad, Hordegaard is another player leaving us. He is going to Helsingborg tomorrow. We accepted a bid from Helsingborg. Um, the young Swedish centre-back... Hasn't advanced as I was hoping, wasn't interested in signing a new contract, had a lot of interest from championship clubs. So I decided to accept an offer from Helsingborg. You can see he's, in terms of average rating, he's done really, really well since signing for us from Manchester City. But um, yeah, we have had to let him go. He is joining for 240,000 plus, I think, 30,000 of any future fee and... A friendly game so it it probably works out getting towards 300,000 on the fee and I think he's a player that could end up going back to a championship club in the future so that 30,000 uh, 30% of any future fee could be really important but um, yeah Hordegaard is on his way out uh, Chinedo not in the squad and a couple of new low knees uh, we have Mark Mitchell on loan from Tottenham, 18-year-old uh, attacking playmaker. He's played a game in the league and scored a goal. Um, he looks a, a decent little prospect, so he is certainly going to get games. And uh, also, Terralonge, Darius Terralonge, or Terralonge, he is a, a really pacey striker, 15 acceleration, 15 pace. He is on loan from Everton, not costing us anything. Decent finisher, just yeah, the mentals of a slug. But um, yeah, hopefully we're not going to really need him. But if he does play, hopefully with that pace and that acceleration, maybe he can give us something that we haven't got out of the, the players that we have in at the moment. So there you go. That's kind of a lot that we've been talking about a big catch up but you can kind of see where we are right now now uh what do i do for this game if we we are obviously massive underdogs against a premier league team but they are struggling do i go with the attacking mentality i think i mean it's been the mentality that has best served us through the season i think i am gonna stick with it um, we will see how it goes. If I have to maybe change to a more balanced mentality, I will do that. Um, how do we get the team up for this? Nothing to lose here. We know how good we are. Show everyone what we're capable of. The players do not react. But can we get any bright green excitement? Yes, we can. Do you know what? I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try and uh, motivate Danielson because I'm so happy with the rest of the squad. I don't want to risk that changing. If I go to motivate Danielson as the striker. So uh, no motivation for you today, Stian Danielson. Uh, let's mark up their fullbacks. I mean, make no bones about it. They're 20th in the Premier League. They've only won twice all season. 
But for a League One team and a League One team that struggles for goals, I think we are in for a tough old time today. But can we just maybe just create a huge upset here? It would be incredible. Um, tactically, yeah, we are on the attacking mentality. We now work the ball into the box, just trying to create a higher percentage chance. We focus our play generally through the middle, but I am going to change that for today. I'm going to go out to the wings just with uh, them playing with a number 10 as uh, in a midfield three. We play to the flanks and um, I have also recently just dropped our line of engagement back a little bit, but I am pressing a lot more often. Uh, it's resulted in a lot more bookings, but it just seems to work for us. So, And I also am not overlapping with the fullbacks. We're just being a, a little bit safer defensively. And that seems to have got us through that little, that little poor run that we had where we dropped out of the, the automatic places. That, those changes just seem to steady the ship somewhat. Um, so here we go. First highlight of the game is for Sunderland. Can we get one over on Frank Lampard? Ferreira straight in and he has missed a really good chance. And a, an early shot across the bowels from Sunderland there. And now Agipong loses the ball and Sunderland on the break with Martin. Rossiter, I think that is, just getting back and marking up there. But it's now gone out to Martin again and they will surely get this ball into the box. All the way back to the defenders and now Gabby forward to Petrovic, Andurin, Ezi, the, I think he's at Crystal Palace in real life, isn't he? He is now a 32-year-old veteran in this Sunderland side. And Martin, Josh Martin puts them ahead early. And if we are to do anything special here, we are going to have to come back in this game. I don't even want to watch the replay. I apologise Ah, uh, what a frustrating start, but can we get back into it here with this corner from Nolan? We can. Jake O'Brien gets his first goal for the club. Our, uh, our number one centre-back, probably a candidate for captain after Agupong leaves. And he has come up with a huge first goal. It looks like a very close to full house stadium here today. And we have got another highlight as Jones come forward and that through ball was not anticipated by Stian Danielson. And Sunderland now get the chance to play out from the back. But Simpson will pick it up. Into Igor Louise, Rossiter, Moreno, back to Louise, into da uh, Danielson. The deep line forward finds Chapman. Can he get it in? Agapong, the captain, has put us ahead. Against the Premier League team. What a story this could be. 13 minutes gone. And now I will watch the replay. I will absolutely watch the replay. Samuel Agyapong, the captain, leaving us to go to Ghanaian football at the end of the season. What a story. We are 2-1 up. And let's just praise the players here. And I am quite happy if we do not get another highlight for the rest of this game. Absolutely phenomenal performance. And now we have a free kick and Jones forces a corner. What a save from Walton. And you have to say we are the better team here. And as we said at the start, maybe just the fact that this Sunderland team is used to losing every game. It may well be counting in our favour. We have had much less of the ball. We've had fewer shots in total. But we have had more highlights. And we are winning right now. Callum Simpson is very tired at the back. Is he going to last the 90 minutes? Can we get a third here just before half time? Can we really put them under pressure before the second half? It goes all the way out to Moreno. But he finds Chapman. Was Chapman offside? Yes, he was. What a performance so far. And now another highlight. Please don't let this one go against us. Let us get into half time. The ball was lost. I was absolutely expecting that. And now they are in on the break. Andrew in. 
Oh. Should I have shut up shop at 2-1? I mean, all the highlights were going for us, but look how easy this is. We've, we're playing a high line, and it's counted against us there as Anjurin gets in behind for the simplest of goals, and we have been caught. We have been caught napping in injury time at the end of the first half. Oh dear, we've been the better team here. Come on. And you have to ask, has our chance gone? Having been 2-1 up, should I have changed things up? Should I have dropped our defensive line? Been a little bit more balanced in our mentality? Should I have kind of shut up shop a little bit? I mean, let's see how this second half goes. I'm not going to change anything just yet. Um, do you know what I might do? Looking at the fact that Sunderland are going heavily through the middle. Do I go narrow in defence? I mean, 48% of the time they're trying to go through the middle. But then also 45% of the time they go down the right. Do I give up the wing if I start defending narrowly? I'm going to leave it right now. Let's encourage the players. We've got a highlight. Can we make something of this or are we going to lose the ball again as we did at the end of the first half? Simpson now really, really tired. I think I'm going to have to change him up. We have lost it again. We've really struggled to get that ball into the final third on the last couple of highlights. Do not please, guys, give this away now. Martin will get the cross in. It's a brilliant save from Sinisolo. And it goes all the way out to Carr. And we live again. Let's make a change here. I mean, Simpson, he's only playing a 6.4 and he is very tired. I'm going to change him up. Simpson comes off. We're going to bring Okadina into the defence. And I mean, Moreno is on a booking. I'm very tired. And Ellis Chapman is very tired as well, but he's playing well. Um, I think I'm going to bring Moreno off. And do I bring Eddie Little on? What is Eddie Little's tackling like? He's only eight tackling. You see, Eddie Little has been progressing really, really well, the youngster. Um, do I bring him in or do I bring Joe Evans in as a deep line midfielder? Or do I even go more defensive and bring on... Joaquin Malicio, uh, just for that extra tackling that he gives us. Do I do I go the more defensive option with Malicio? I think I will. We'll make those two changes for now. And let's see if these guys can get us to that, that replay at the Stadium of Light. Let's encourage the players again. Agyapong very tired now as well. Rossiter not playing well. Chapman really tired. Do I make a change for Chapman? As Sunderland get another highlight. And I'm really worried about this now. Please guys, just hold on. Please, Petrovic finds Wesley. Oh no, it was offside. We live another day. Let's change things up here. Let's start now being a lot more disciplined. Full on time wasting for the last 15 minutes. Let's slow things down. And I'm also just going to drop our defensive line back and get stuck in. And I'm going to see if with that we can see this out. Let's make a change here. Nolan and Chapman really, really tired. Who do I bring off? Ellis Chapman is a little bit more tired than Nolan. I'm going to bring on Joe Evans and I'm going to swap Nolan and Evans to the other side. So Evans, just as that advanced playmaker on the right, can he maybe come up with a telling pass at the end of the game? Um, I mean, this is really, really tough. I'm going to go positive mentality as well. And I'm just going to encourage the players again for these last five minutes. We have we have been well, well below par the second half. Sunderland have really spent the second half on top. 
but we are going to oh we are not going to a replay we're going to extra time oh no i thought we were getting that lucrative replay at the stadium of light oh no do i get another change oh dear Come on, let's let's show up in extra time. Come on, boys. Can we get some more bright green motivation? We can't. Oh dear. And you know what? I hope I get another change because Ethan Varian is our penalty taker. And Nolan is absolutely shattered. I mean, we've given a really good account of ourselves here, haven't we? Uh, I'm just going to bring the time wasting down a little bit just with the fact that we've still got all of this extra time to play now do I get another change here let's have a look am I able to change Nolan for Varian um, I am not ah oh dear so I cannot bring on my best penalty taker I think it would be an absolute miracle if with the team that we have we were able to uh, win this on penalties i would be shocked but the team have done incredibly incredibly well we've got a highlight is some fa cup romance coming up here or do we lose this ball we have lost it and you're in into az it's over the top, headed away, and Nolan gets hold of it. Agupong, Rossiter, Okadina out to Jones. Nolan now finds Danielson, who's had a poor game, and he loses the ball. And they are back in again with Aze. He gets the cross in, and it's saved by Sanisolo. And I'm going to go back to full-on time-wasting. Let's just shoot on sight and hit early crosses now. Can we Can we maybe just get something out of this? Like I said, I cannot see any way we win this on penalties. I think we have got to come up with something. Danielson with his pace, he's onto it. He's not really shown in the highlights today, but has he got an important touch there to get us out of our own half? Evans, Malicio, Danielson, Evans. Is that a penalty? It's not. And usually on Football Manager 2022, when you don't get a penalty, the other team usually goes all the way down the other end. But it hasn't happened here. But Rossiter is sent off with three minutes to go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the drama. Their number 10 is now absolutely free. Um, let's go a little bit more direct. Let's regroup when we lose the ball. Let's just distribute over the top of their defence. Try and get Danielson with his pace onto it. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna drop off the pressing. And I'm gonna hope that this is enough to get us through to the end of the game on penalties. Another highlight. Please, no football manager, don't do this to me. We've lost the ball again. Petrovic, Wesley, we are standing off the Menezi is in and we've lost it. Oh, no. Oh, football manager, I hate you. Oh, football manager, how can you do this to me? Oh. I am devastated. Absolutely devastated. Oh, we start, we restart the game with a highlight, but where does this go? We lose it again. Back to O'Brien, Ocadina, Malicio, O'Brien. And we were meant to be playing more direct and looking for the ball over the top. Why on earth did we start playing there? Sanisolo saves from AZ. And they now win it again. Do they finish it here? Great tackle. But they've won it back. And Aze as Okadina is injured. Is that where the highlight ends? It is. 
Now, I think this is all over, but let's at least go for it. Oh, dear. How annoying. What a performance from the boys. Oh, dear. An incredible performance from our League One relegation favourites. But this one is over, isn't it? This one is over. I am absolutely devastated to lose it like that. Two minutes from penalties. And Frank Lampard gets the last laugh. Oh. Oh dear. I thought at the very least there we could have got to penalties. We would have gone to a replay had there been third round replays. Oh, that's devastating. Absolutely devastating. And our players, after playing an hour and 20 minutes, what am I saying? An hour and 20 minutes. They played an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, no, they, they played an hour and 30 minutes plus extra time, didn't they? They played 120 minutes. And we're now in a race to see if those players can be fit for the next game in the league. Um, I don't know what to say. I think on this series, we have had our fair share of horrible losses and disappointing performances on live com games but that one there that's a bitter pill to swallow that really is devastating and maybe i should have pulled a player back into midfield after the sending off because that goal came from i think where rossiter should have been following their number 10 yeah i've i think i've got to, i've got to take the blame for that one haven't i I've probably got to take the blame for it, but we are out of the FA Cup and nearly an incredible, incredible upset, but it has been undone. What does that do to the finances? I think the money hasn't gone in yet because I think this is about where we were before. I'm expecting this to go up over a million on the back of that game. Um, we've got a couple of low knees in the works here which I'm not expecting to go through. I've got a, a central defender from Sunderland who has had um, some bids on him. So I think he'll probably go somewhere better on a transfer. And the same with a striker from Sheffield Wednesday. We've got a loan contract offered, but I think he's going to go on a permanent deal elsewhere. And there might be Swindon that want him. I'm trialing loads and loads of strikers right now. Um, I'm trialing or scouting loads of strikers. I'm just trying to get to the end of January with a new striker in. I'm looking for that, that player that can just make the difference. You can see I've been scouting players like uh, Rafaelidis here. Uh, that was the other thing. I said at the start of the season, I bought a scouting package. It did leave us with, <laughs> with no scouting budget after only two months. So all I can do now is basic scouting. Um, I can only do basic scouting of players uh, just to get a general picture of them. So we had 5,000 at that game. Hopefully that's bought in a decent amount. Um, oh, let's send our assistant to the press conference. I really cannot, cannot live with doing a press conference right now. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got no scouting budget, which is really going to hurt us at the end of the season um, in terms of identifying new players. But um, but yeah, that's the situation we're in. I did think, of course, when I bought the scouting package that maybe that would eat up all the, uh, the scouting budget. I, I mixed up our scouting budget with a, a monthly scouting budget for a yearly scouting budget. So I thought I was paying per month and uh, the whole year was done within within three months. So, um, yeah, have the finances updated now? No, they haven't. Um, that would at least cheer me up to see our bank balance being up over a million again. But, um, yeah, you can see things are really slowing down here. So, 
Um, yeah, I will leave it there. We're out of the FA Cup. I will come back at the end of the season, hopefully, to do an end of season run in with playoffs. Um, that would be absolutely wonderful. Um, there you go. Chris Wade has come in on trial. What can we see about Chris Wade? He's got decent finishing. Decent finishing at the very least. We'll see what happens with Chris Wade. Uh, maybe my finances were worse than I thought because um, apparently we are not we are not going to have over a million in the bank. So maybe I was wrong about that. Maybe our finances are a lot more than I thought. I can't believe that's right. We do lose a lot of money each month, but I thought we were a little bit healthier than that because we had 1.2 million in the bank. Callum Simpson and although we've spent some of that on upgrading the training facilities um, we were I thought we were still around 700,000 in the black so uh, I was expecting that to go up over a million it is going to go up 240,000 when uh, when uh, the sale of Heidegger goes through uh, no there you go so I was completely wrong we were obviously a lot more in the toilet financially than I thought. Um, we've got 181,000 in gate receipts here. I can't believe that's right. I thought we were going to have some massive, massive gate receipts come in. Um, there you go. But we're playing Shrewsbury away in our next game, which you can see they are fourth. They were promoted from League One through the playoffs. From League Two, sorry. They were promoted through the playoffs in League Two. They are a bit of a bogey team for us. We have lost, uh, I think, the, at the very least, the last three games we have played against them. They do seem to have, uh, they do seem to have the beating of us. I'm going to check finances again, just because I can't believe that's right. I don't believe it. Um, how on earth did we only get 181,000 in gate receipts that's including our other games at home this month that seems really really odd surely that gets updated after this weekend or something i cannot believe that's right that is really disappointing um anyway there you go um so yeah we're, we're playing shrewsbury it's a massive massive game we need to win that to keep in touch not just with the playoff picture well, I mean, we're under real pressure from Portsmouth behind us in the playoffs. And um, beating Shrewsbury would also get us above them in the league, I think. I think they're two points ahead of us. So um, it's a massive, massive game. I will be back, I think, at uh, the end of the season. Hopefully for playoffs, we will do an end of season special if we have playoffs to play. Or even if we manage to find that next level striker and we can somehow be the form team of the second half of the season and go up automatically. I'm really not expecting that though. We'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's where we are right now. Finance is not looking great. I would expect that to be those 700,000. I would expect the majority of that to be lost by the time we, uh, we get to the end of the season. Um, yeah, it's a little bit frustrating right now, but hopefully there's going to be some playoffs at the end of the season and uh, maybe we can work a miracle and make ourselves a championship team for next season. It's been nearly 50 minutes. It's been a long one, so I'm going to leave it there. As I said before, if you've enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. Uh, help us uh, help us build up the, uh, the YouTube al algorithm and you can also share it on your uh, social media if you like. So um, that will be all for me as we get in this long, long wait for the date to pass over. Um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one when hopefully things are going a little bit better for us. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. See you soon.